Hello, my name is Tridar. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a Roman Insula in Minecraft. Let's get started. Now, the Roman Insula was the apartment block of the ancient world. Uh, insula, a uh, fun fact, actually refers firstly to the plot of land that the building would be set on, but uh, later on it became a synonym for a type of apartment building in itself. And this is going to be one of many types of insula. I'm going to be showing you how to construct. They're all going to get their own separate video, but this one is going to be type one of an insula. I've already made seven such structures. I plan to build uh, three more, possibly more than that, depending on um, just how many I need, but that should be sufficient amount for you to be able to build these yourself and have them look a bit different from each other. Uh, so uh, down here on the fl uh, ground floor, of course, uh, as in modern, as in ancient times, there would be shops on the lowest level called tabernae. They would all have doors down there leading to individual tabernae, selling various wares of all the necessities of life. Uh, the next floors up from that would feature the houses of the upper and middle class. Uh, and of course the top floors would feature the cheapest apartments for the lowest uh, classes down here. Of course uh, they, they were Buildings mostly for the uh, plebeian class. Of course, uh, the patricians would be living in nice uh, Roman domiciles, or domus, as it were, uh, but uh, the plebeians would be living in all of the insula. I think uh, at the height of ancient Rome, there were roughly about 45,000 of these insula in Rome by various uh, um, calculations. Uh, but very few of them have survived in the modern day because they weren't exactly built to the highest Roman construction standards. They were built to make money. And as like um, uh, modern structures today, that means that they're built very economically and sometimes a little too economically. They would have, they had a habit of collapsing. So that's why we only have just a, a very few fragments of insulate left standing today. Uh, I think there's like one in Rome and a couple of them in Ostia and, and uh, that's about it. Uh, but for this model here, um, I have taken the general shape and concept of a Roman insula, and we are going to repurpose this building for use in Minecraft, because uh, we don't really need apartment buildings in Minecraft exactly, because we don't have a bunch of uh, plebeians and a tabernet we need to put down there, but we do have a lot of ugly redstone farms. And uh, to that end, what I am proposing you use this building for is as a facade uh, for your farms. In other words, if you have a particularly ugly redstone farm that you would like to make look nicer, you can just wrap this building around it. Because if we go inside here, you can see that this building is just a facade. In other words, it's a hollow shell, and it's got a generous amount of space in here for you to be able to fit a very large and very ugly redstone machine in here to do your farms with. Of course, at the top here, we do have a nice skylight open to the sky. I, ha I have... Uh, left all these open because I assume what you're actually going to do is just fly in and out of here on your elytra. There are, of course, uh, doors at the bottom that I walk through. Uh, and there are windows on the outside to give the appearance of that. Uh, I should also remark before we get started that I have divided the floors out just a little bit based on the windows here to say if you have um, several farms in other words, if you don't want to build just one farm for one building, you can put one farm down there and then extend a cobblestone floor over at this level, build another farm here, and extend another floor and build another farm up here. So you could uh, you can cram however many farms you need to in this building. Uh, and from the facade here, you may suggest, um, I mean, you may pick up on the fact that I'm suggesting that uh, this building here is modular. Uh, as with a lot of my other buildings, meaning that you can either uh, stretch or compress this design here, like so. So if we split it in half here, we can see all the uh, space we have in there to work with. Uh, but these sections on the on the side here, you can see if, if we split one in half like that, like off right here, uh, this can be a sort of a module that we can use to expand the design farther. Now, it's not exactly a clean um, modular design, especially once you get up here at uh, the uh, topmost floors. Um, uh, 
but it should be expandable. In other words, if you look at the pattern here, you can see down here, all of this is just a module. It's a repeating pattern. So if you build the building a bit more that way and build this up here a bit more that way as well, and uh, do your best to replicate uh, the uppermost portions for that as well, you can, you can make the building longer if you need to, to fit your farm, like so, by adding more segments in the middle. Or, on the sides here, you can also split the building and make it wider as well as longer for that also. It's going to uh, have the effect of making your skylight up here an odd shape. Uh, but uh, you will have to uh, tackle that when you come to it. So if you want to put this over an existing redstone farm or something, uh, you will have to solve that engineering problem. But I've uh, designed these buildings to be large enough that uh, I think most redstone farms you have probably already fit inside of this, uh, maybe a few times over. And uh, this one here is done in the Doric style. Most of the other ones are going to be done in Corinthian, of course, in, in good Roman style. But we're going to start over here with, uh, with the Doric. Uh, and they're fairly simple design. So before we start with the tutorial, um, let's uh, take a look at the amount of materials you will need to construct just one of these. Now this here, these numbers are going to be for the reference model right here as it stands. If you want to expand these like I suggested that you can do over there, you will need more than what I have listed here. But you will need the same types of materials, just different numbers. So for the reference model, you will need 4,804 blocks of diorite, uh, 14,999 blocks of cobblestone, 120 stone slabs, 1,204 cobblestone slabs, 680 deep slate tile slabs for the roof, 600, I mean uh, 760 cobblestone stairs, 200 blocks of light blue stained glass for the windows, also for the windows, 120 light blue stained glass panes, uh, 2,924 stone bricks, 260 stone brick stairs, and 932 blocks of red nether brick for the roof tiles. So as you can see, standard palette I use to make many of my Roman things. It's uh, mostly a lot of cobblestone, and uh, since the building is hollow, that, that may be close to the minimum amount for all of these materials that you will need. Uh, so the dimensions for the building are as follows. It, it is 55 blocks long across the front here, 41 blocks deep back that way, and 48 blocks tall from the steps down here to the acroterion on the roof there at the top. So to get started, the first thing you want to do is make a rectangle of uh, 55 by 41 with uh, the cobblestone stairs. This measurement here includes the, you can see it's sitting on a cobblestone stair, so it includes that measurement here. And you will want to make a rectangle out of that and then slab all that over with uh, just straight cobblestone. And uh, if you're already building this around a farm, then you want to have um, mark this out and make sure your, your farm sits in the middle here. So the next phase up from that, we want to start on the building itself. So I will give you a good top-down view of what we have going here. It's a very simple pattern to start with. You can see the walls in general are going to be about two blocks thick, uh, mostly cobblestone. So we want to start on the edge here. You want to set back a block on either sides and make a four by four column base of diorite here. And then, the, then, and then the intercolumnation distance for this building is going to be five blocks. I don't think there's any place where it's not five blocks, as you see done here. So you want to make another uh, column base, skip five blocks, a column base, and so on and so forth until we get to the other side of the building. Here we have a couple of entrances on the ground floor right here. Uh, these are optional entrances. If you don't want to have these, you can just uh, fill this in solid with cobblestone. Uh, perhaps uh, perhaps back here, or add a door or something. I did not include doors in the materials list uh, because I want to leave this structure uh, free for you to be able to modify it to your needs and not uh, needlessly overcomplicate things. Uh, so I will just show you at the front here. So across the front we have eight columns, and then across the sides we have four, and then eight more at the back. And uh, this building is going to have four-way symmetry, by the way. Has to do a lot of Roman buildings. So if we if we draw a center line straight through the building right here, this will come out over here to the door on the other side. But if we go back to the middle here, 
and we start drawing another center line from that side that will meet in the middle here. So as I go, I'm going to be showing you about a quarter of this building. But recognize the other three quarters of the building are done exactly the same as this one. All right, so uh, next phase is going to be uh, pretty easy. You're just extending up all the columns, like you see. And over here, we're adding some of the details for the windows. Now, all the windows on my installer designs have been uh, uh, framed out with a diorite. Uh, the Doric design here has a particularly narrow window. It's just one block on the side, like you see done here. A little bit different for the doorway there. And we're just alternating windows and doorways and windows and, and doorways, like you see done there. We're also banding our cobblestone and our stone bricks, like you see done here. You see, we started at the bottom with uh, two layers of cobble, but now we're doing a layer of stone bricks. All right, next phase, two blocks farther up. You are uh, basically repeating the uh, entire last phase. You're just extending everything up with the windows like you see done here across the front and the sides. It's only a little bit different for the doorway right there. All right, uh, next phase, uh, same deal. I think uh, ex it's exactly the same deal, except we are putting in a band of stone bricks like you see done here. So in this building in general, Every time we use uh, two layers of stone bricks, we're going to be using one layer of cobble. I said that backwards. We're going to be using two layers of cobble for one layer of stone bricks, two layers of cobble for one layer of stone bricks, and so on and so forth throughout the building uh, right there. So uh, moving on again, you can see uh, very simple designs. Alternating our cobble and our stone bricks here for the windows, like you see done there, uh, all the windows, of course, on the ground floor are the same, as are all the doors here. So you want to go around and build them all to that plan while extending the columns up on the outside, or rather the plasters, because they're just attached to the building for decoration's sake only. Uh, back here, we have some uh, decoration here. Uh, you could make these into additional windows if you wanted to, but uh, they're just decoration for the door quarter or the windows, like you see done here. The same over the doorways, you're just making these little squares cut out like that. It's just a small suggestion of a, a meta piece, which of course is one of those uh, square panels carved out in uh, Greek temples. Over here we have our Doric capitals, which we are doing with just upside down stone bricks, uh, cobblestone stairs, and then just a straight abacus of stone bricks, uh, no, of cobble on top of that. I keep mixing up cobble and stone bricks today. Um, but all those columns are the same, so once you do one of those, you just do all the other ones in exactly the same way, just tying them into the building, like you see done here. Uh, next phase, we want to add a Doric entablature. And, well, you know, as nice of a Doric entablature as we can do with a two-block wide column. And for that, we want to extend our uh, lintel over for two blocks right there on either side. Right there. And every other block, you want to place a block of diorite and have a, uh, a band of diorite behind that. And just make a big rectangle with that pattern all the way around your building, like you see done here. Very simple. Uh, for the next phase, I think that, uh, I'm not sure if you see that down right there or not. That may be superfluous. Um, but for the, the cornice, for this, we want to extend, you want to go around and extend all of this up here that you did uh, another block to where it's two blocks. And then over here, we want to have some uh, cobblestone stairs back here, and then cobblestone slabs on every other one of those with a little detail on the cornice on the side of the entablature here. Like you see, you want to do this pattern without exception all the way around the building, and then face the entire front of it with a big rectangle of stone bricks like you see done here.
And I think uh, this is a little extra diorite that probably shouldn't be there. So ignore that and just make that straight cobblestone like you see done here. So for the next phase, we want to then place a big rectangle of cobblestone slabs on top of the cornice there for that all the way around the building. And now we want to make some uh, more uh, diorite columns like we did down there. I believe these columns, they sit directly on top of the first ones that we built. And of course, as you can see, they're spaced five blocks apart. Right here, without exception. And behind this, we have just uh, straight, straight cobble and stone bricks and a little bit of diorite because we are building the lowest portions of some more window frames right there. So again, that's a repeating pattern. Let me just show you that from the top down here. Go around and uh, make all those. And the, the little guardrails here we have just for decoration. We have here with uh, stone brick stairs facing each other, a slab in the middle, and then facing each other, each other again like that there. And then uh, make one of those all the way around the building. Uh, if you want to also, you can uh, hide some lighting back here, as I have done as well. Just tuck a few torches back there. I haven't talked about lighting because it's in survival. You're, you, you automatically know you need to festoon the entire thing with torches. Um, so over here, you can see next phase, two blocks up. We are building more window frames, uh, more of the walls, and uh, more of the uh, columns over here. Same design for each one of these modules. All the way around the building like you see done here. Next phase, it's actually the same deal. You are just extending all of that up again, like I talked about, for two blocks. Uh, next phase here, though, this, uh, this section is shorter than the one we did at the bottom. So we are already adding our uh, Doric capitals with our upside-down cobblestone stairs. We're finishing off our windows on the sides here. Uh, I didn't remark about the windows, by the way. For every other one of these blocks, you are using a full block and a pane. In other words, there's a full block here, and then a pane, and then a full block, and a pane, and a full block there, like so. Just a very subtle uh, design detail for the windows. Of course, in the middle, we've uh, continued to alternate the cobblestone and the stone bricks, like you see done here. And you want to add those all the way around the building, and we will go on to the next phase here, where we place the rest of our capital, the, the Bacchus level right here with the 4x4 four four cobblestone um, where there. And then on top of that, a big rectangle of cobble, like you see done here. And this hangs over also additional two blocks on each side, like that, repeating patterns all the way around the building for all of that there. Uh, next phase here, uh, I think we can skip some of this because what you're doing for this one is you're building another one of these. So what we did down here from this point here to there is uh, the entablature, and you're building just a, a second one of those, same details, the same motif and everything, right on top of that, like you see done there. And uh, next phase here, you want to again put uh, um, stone bricks like you see done here. This block here would correspond to this block here. And you want to add um, a rectangle of uh, cobblestone slabs like you see be done here all the way around the building except for on the sides here where we have some, some little decorative uh, acroterions on the side here which uh, you build uh, like that there out of diorite. Uh, we do also have some roof tiles at this level here, like you see. So one of these, this is just going to be a simple repeating module. So if I zoom out here, you can see uh, that they are all just uh, simply repeating. Uh, they do appear to be offset a little in the middle because the, the windows on the top are um, set at a different interval than the ones at the bottom are. So I'll just show you this from the top here, and I think you can uh, grasp that. In fact, uh, that's not actually the window level at all. Huh. Okay, that's, that's just some extra diorite that should have been removed. 
So ignore, ignore the diorite on this level here. My apologies. Sometimes there's some mistakes in these buildings. But I will normally catch them when I'm doing the tutorial, so you can fix it. Over here on the sides, we can see we're doing just a simple and short pattern with our roof tiles. And we have cobble uh, full blocks and half slabs behind that, and then stone bricks behind that. For three blocks wide here, view from the inside there. And you want to extend this pattern all the way along the front. Turn the corners with it and do all the four sides. So you get something like that there. For the next phase, we are now building in the third level or the third story of the building. I imagine you could probably squeeze many more stories into this building than I have windows for it. Uh, over here, though, you can see we're just doing the same design with the, the glass and the diorite here, except uh, we're grouping them together. In other words, in, in the middle here is going to be our one of our center lines in the middle there. So we have a window on that side. We skip two blocks, then a window, and then we skip only one block. And then on the side here, we skip four, turn the corner for two, another window, skip one, a window, skip two, and uh, so on and so forth there until we get to, uh, where's the middle? And we get to what should be the, the uh, middle right there, and then you continue the entire thing around again for the rest of the structure here. All right, uh, next phase, uh, simple phase, just extend all the windows straight up two blocks. Uh, next phase here, over here again, though, we uh, finish those windows, and we are putting a little, uh, just a little decorative lintel of upside down stone brick stairs on top of those like you see done here on top of uh, every one of these windows that you made. Just across the face here, just a little bit of detail to give some uh, depth to the structure so it's not just a, a complete flat wall. Uh, next phase up from that is just a simple rectangle of cobble and then a rectangle of diorite like you see done here, just a big band all the way around the building like you have there for that, for a very, very simple entablature design. Then on top of that, you want to put upside down stone brick stairs and a big rectangle all the way around the building here. And up here, we're now also doing the roof. So we have our cobblestone half slabs again. Like we built down there for all of that, we're doing all of that again up here, except we're now doing the main roof. We're doing uh, over here also the, the decorative acroterions. Like you see done there, just little these, these little decorative finales that are on uh, uh, ancient Roman, uh, Roman buildings. Uh, if I just show this to you, I think you can uh, rather clearly see we've just got simple repeating patterns for the roof tiles. Uh, like you see done here. Every other one of those, you want to use a tile of deep slate rather a deep slate slab. And then we want to extend the entire design upwards like this here with uh, the cobblestone ribs on the roofs here. I always add these to my buildings because I think it, it makes the roof look a, a little bit more interesting. Uh, not technically in ancient Roman detail. Um, but I have taken quite a lot of liberties with the basic insula design. As I said in a previous post, these are sort of the, uh, the posh Disney version of an ancient Roman insula. Authentic insula would uh, would look rather boring if I did them plain in, in Minecraft, actually. Uh, so I want to make something that, that looked a little bit nicer that uh, you might like to have in your world. Show you this from the top down here. And let's go on to the, the final one here. And I'll show you a completer roof. It might, um, might make more sense with how all that uh, measures. So in the top here, we want to have, um, I should go back and give you some measurements for the uh, opening in the roof. I neglected to do that. So uh, let's take a diagonal measurement actually. So from this point here, right behind the acroteria, we want to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
9, 10, 11, 12 blocks. So 12 diagonal blocks will give you the measurement there. You want to have the cutout for that. Just leave that uh, an open hole in the middle of your building that you can use to fly in and out with your elytra. And then on top of that, you can then begin building the half slabs and then the roof tiles in these designs like you see done here. a real close design on this it's just a simple repeating pattern you can see here with the roof tile same design I use on all my Roman structure and uh, once you have done that your Roman insula type 1 will be complete so I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial for the ancient Roman insula this has been a highly requested building it's going to be sort of a sort of a series because, as I've said, I've got uh, many other types of Roman insula I'm going to show you how to build. They're all going to look kind of like this with the, most of the same materials, but they're going to be different uh, designs and everything, different shapes and sizes. So you can use them to uh, cover up uh, any ugly redstone farm you have with a nice, elegant, uh, classical Roman facade. And also, remember, the world is available for download in the video description as it always ends. And I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.